It is so good to be home with you. It's so good to be here with you. I've been looking forward to this. When I was asked to speak by Laura, I was at General Conference, and she was like, I know you're busy, but. And so I was like, sure, I'd be happy to. And I was praying. After I got Hope dropped off at IBC, I had a long drive home, and I was praying, Lord, what would you have me to speak on Wednesday? And as I was driving and praying, and I love silence. Oh, let's just try that for a minute. Ready? Isn't that awesome? Isn't that refreshing? I love silence. I can drive in silence for hours. Um, but the Lord gave me a word. He gave me one word. It was a very clear impression, and I felt that word. And that word was harvest. And as I began to think about that word, another word came and cozied up next to it, and it was moon. And I was like, harvest moon. Okay, well, I think God has given me something. I'm going to check into that. So as I like to do after I get some direction, I like to dig into the research. I want to not just see what's in the Bible. I want to see what's going on in the world. What season are we in? What's the history of this subject? And so I just dig in and call up Professor Google. And I typed in Harvest Moon. And imagine my excitement as I had been seeking the Lord for direction, and I had these words, these impressed to my spirit, and I punched in the words Harvest Moon, and the very first thing Professor Google came up with, it said, Sky Watch, planets in double play with Harvest Moon lollygagging in Autumnal playoff season. Now, I know that doesn't make a lot of sense. That's the title of an article, and they try to get a lot of stuff in there to draw in and encompass all of the subject that's going to be in the article. But what I found out from that article is that tomorrow, just a few hours from tonight, is our annual once a year harvest moon. I was like, did you just, I was like, God, you're so cool. This is tomorrow, the day after I speak. You're giving me this word. And I was rather in awe. And I started on this quest, and it led me to this message today with the title, By the Light of the Harvest Moon. Now, there's a couple of old songs that I merged together to make this title. I don't know if you know those old songs. Oh, you've heard those tinny old recordings made in the early 1900s. And one of them goes, by the light of the silvery moon. And then the other one is, shine on, shine on, harvest moon. And so I took those two songs and I merged them together to come up with this title, by the light of the silvery moon. And both of those songs were love songs that were popular in the early 1900s. And, and we are going to have a Bible study, I promise. <laughs> There's lots of word that's coming up here, but I want to lay a little bit of groundwork. Those love songs made popular back then, it was a different time, it was a different era, but they were talking about connecting in the, under the moonlight with the one that you love. They were about talking and singing and connecting with someone that you cared about under the moonlight. By the light of the silvery moon, they sang love's tune. And I believe that's what God is calling us to do in this season that we're in, under the light of the harvest moon, to sing loves tune to the ones he loves. In the song Shine on Harvest Moon, a young man is actually singing to the moon because the girl's afraid of the dark and she, he wants her to stay. <laughs> you can guess why. <laughs> they were, you know, spending some time together. 
Boonin. He said, shine on, shine on harvest moon for me and my gal. And all this might seem random and abstract, but we're going somewhere, I believe. And I believe that the Lord wants to connect some dots and give us a picture of the season that we're in and what we're supposed to be doing in it. So let's start by looking at what is a harvest moon. As I said, there's one harvest moon a year, and tomorrow's is the harvest moon. If you actually go up there and look, you might think it's a full moon today, but it's not. That's one of the tricks of a harvest moon. But a harvest moon, it's not a crescent moon. It's not a quarter moon. It's not a waxing or a waning moon. It is a full moon, and it is the full moon that appears closest to the fall equinox. And it looks bigger, and it looks closer. But that's just an optical illusion, because it's not really bigger or closer, is it? The moon doesn't get bigger or closer. In fact, that reminds me of a story that I read just today. Two first graders were living in Canada, and they were sitting on a bench during recess. And one child asked the other, which do you think is farther away, Mexico? Or the moon. And the second child turned to the first with a bewildered look in her face and said, Well, hello, can you see Mexico? Well, just because you can see it doesn't mean it's closer. That was actually a blonde joke, but I changed it to be politically correct. <laughs> um, well, we can see the moon, and it might look like it's closer, but it's not closer even during the harvest season. But for several evenings in the year, it looks closer, and it looks bigger, and it looks brighter, and it has a special appearance, an orange, reddish, yellowish glow. And that actually happens because it comes closer to the Earth's horizon. And as we look at it, we're not looking at it straight up. We're looking at it through the Earth's atmosphere and the way that it appears, even though it didn't change color up in the sky. In the season that we're in, it looks a different color to us. So how did the harvest moon get its name? Well, in the days before electric flood lamps and spot beams on tractors, the light of the harvest moon gave farmers extra time to work in their fields. Because as we know, the days are getting shorter, aren't they? <laughs> And when those days were getting shorter and the sun's light was fading in the west, but right at that time during the harvest moon, the sun came up. Um, the moon came up. The moon came up as the sun set, and it gave them extra time to go out into the field and bring in the last of the summer harvest. That's why it's called... The harvest moon. Isn't it nice to know as the seasons come and go that God made provision for the late in the season harvest? And every year you can count on a little extra light at the end of the growing season. And I believe that we're in, at the end of another season. I was, as I was preparing to speak to you today, I just kept thinking, if you read this book, if we look at the times and the occurrences and the signs and the seasons, I don't have a day, I don't have an hour, I don't even really have a generation. But when I look to this book in the scale of all of human time, we're in the last of the harvest season. And it's time for the harvest crew to get out in the field. It's an all-hands-on-deck kind of a harvest. It's a everybody is part of the team, and we've all got to be on board to go out into the harvest. In the days, our agricultural days, people went and they went to each other's farms and they helped each other out to get their harvest in. You helped them and they helped you, and, and Mama was cooking in the... And, Little Susie was watching the little ones, and everybody worked together to bring in the harvest. 
And that's what God is calling us to do in this day, to come together and to work together to bring in the harvest under the light of the harvest moon. We've got to go out into the field and sing love's tune. Sing about God's love to the world that doesn't know him. Because he loved for them. He came for them. He gave his life for them. And we've got to go out of our homes, out of our comfortable places, out into the dark together. And in today's world, though, we're not going out like in days of old with just a sickle and some bailing twine. We've got resources in today's world. And I think as a church, we need to take advantage of every opportunity, every method that God has given us. We need to utilize every outreach tool that God authorizes for us to use as a church, as individuals. We need to do the Bible studies. We need to utilize social media and blogs and webs and whatever we have at our disposal. But most of all, we need to be friends. We got to be friends. And you and I have got to realize that we're all on this team together, even though we might be working different shifts and have different responsibilities. You know, if you go out into the harvest fields, one person's driving the, the combine, and another person got the truck that's catching all the grain, another one the, the grain hauler. Everybody's got a different thing to do. I threw a little note in here, a little warning, that if you're working in the harvest field, I actually looked up online um, help wanted ads for harvest workers, and it said you can't be a smoker or a drinker. Because that's dangerous in the harvest field. Can you imagine having some booze and some cigarettes out there by the silo? We can't be carnal when we're out working in the field because we could endanger the very crop that we're trying to bring in. So that was just a little bonus in there. We've got to concentrate and we've got to consecrate for the task that is at hand. And sometimes you might be cooking up the meal for somebody else and sometimes you might be on the shift taking care of the little ones in the nursery. But everybody's got a job to do. And we have to remember that a harvest crew has its laborers, but it also has its leaders. And we need to work together towards the same goal, no matter what position we're in. So when I pulled out my concordance and I looked up harvest and I looked up moon, I didn't find one occurrence where they appeared together in the Bible. But I was like, doing the double take because I had it on my phone. I have the Strong's on my phone, and I was like, I saw this same number pop up. 51 references of harvest, 51 references of moon. I don't know that there's any significance in it, but I was just kind of like, well, that's interesting. And as I was looking at the different harvests that the Bible talks about, the Bible talks about many harvests. And when it comes to harvesting people, a few passages stand out. In the Old Testament, because God's people had been so wicked, Joel prophesied that the unbelievers, the Gentiles, were going to bring judgment on God's people. In Joel 3.13, he was talking to the Gentiles. He was prophesying. He said, put ye in the sickle, for the harvest is ripe. The prophet was saying, there's going to be a reaping of the wicked right in their day. In the Old Testament time, there was a reaping of the wicked. And in the New Testament, the prophetic book of Revelation tells us in advance about what's going to happen. On one day, an angel is going to speak. He's going to cry out to one that's sitting on the cloud, one that's likened to the Son of Man. And he's going to say, thrust in thy sickle and reap, for the time has come. For thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. And what is that reaper going to do? Whatever that reaper gathers in is going to be thrown into a wine press that has the name, the wrath of God. What is reaped at that harvest is going to be crushed 
in that wine press. And the scripture says that the grapes will be trampled and blood will flow from the wine press in a stream 200 miles long and as high as a horse's bridle. There is coming a harvest in the world, and it's not going to be pretty. But aren't you thankful we're not in that harvest yet? <laughs> I'm thankful about that. God, I'm thankful that I am already harvested. Hallelujah. We're not in that season, but the harvest moon is still rising in the night sky. And we still have time to work the fields before that fateful day when that angel says, put in thy sickle. It's time to reap the harvest. It's not time to rest. The Word of God says in Proverbs 10:5 that the person who sleeps in harvest causes shame. I don't want to be ashamed, and I don't want to cause shame for myself or for my Lord because I'm sleeping during the harvest time. And that same verse goes on to say, but the one who gathers in summer is wise. If you've been saved, you are already harvested. You are righteous. You are the fruit that is already gathered in. Proverbs 11.30 says, The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. And then it says, And he that winneth souls is wise. And now winning souls, as Brandon was talking about earlier, and I even had put earlier in my notes, I was going to mention that Brother Gleason had talked about this at General Conference. We're not just here to get numbers on the chart of we dunked so and so many people and we got so many people doing this. We want to make disciples. We want people to be converted because if we don't continue, we can lose what God has given us. So winning souls, though, it's not some abstract religious term. I don't really like the term souls because, to me, I don't think about people. A soul is a person. It's not a number to tick off. One more on the roll. One more went down. It's a person saved from the wrath of God. It's a person saved from judgment. It's a life born again, renewed by the Spirit of God to walk with grace and dignity and purpose. It's not about tick marks and tally marks. It's about people and their eternal life. By the light of the harvest moon. In Matthew 9, 37, Jesus told his disciples, the harvest truly is plenteous. There is a great harvest, and we are all going to be harvested. The wheat and the tares. We will all be harvested. And it reminded me, as I was preparing this message, about a word from Dr. Jeffers when he said, which side of the fire are you on? Which side of the harvest am I on? Which side of the harvest are you on? But beyond that, which side of the harvest are the people across the street on? And I'm gonna, am I going to be content to let them stay? the side of the harvest that they're on. What about my family? What about my friends? It's harvest time, and we can't delay. It's time to tell the world that Jesus is the way, that Jesus is the truth, that Jesus is life. 
that his death, burial, and resurrection alone, that's the gospel. And to receive the forgiveness of sins that we need to enter into eternal life, we've got to experience our own death, burial, and resurrection through repentance, being baptized in Jesus' name and being filled with the Spirit of God, the resurrection power of God in us resurrecting the dead spirit man because what happened when Adam and Eve ate the sin uh, the, the fruit sin entered and they died but they were still alive but there was a spiritual death and we've got to have the resurrection power of God in our lives John said in John 4:35 Jesus said, he said, you know, there's a saying, four months between the planting and the harvest. You know, you got your seed in, take a nap. <laughs> you got your seed, you got four months before you have to do any more work. But Jesus didn't say that we should accept that premise. He said, but I say, wake up and look around. Because you might have just planted some seeds, some spiritual seed yesterday, but I see a harvest, and it's already ripe. There are people out in the field right now, and we might be looking at them and thinking, it's not their time. They're not ready. I don't see any sprouts around here. But Jesus said, wake up and look around would you look beyond your expectations? Would you look beyond your limitations? Would you look beyond your narrow vision and see the harvest? Because I see it. Oh, God, let us see the harvest. Let us see it the way you see it. Oh, God, hallelujah, we need his vision. He knows who's ready. He knows who's sprouting. He knows who's in season. Help us, Jesus. The seasons of the earth have continued since the beginning of time. Genesis 8.22 tells us that while the earth remains, there will be natural seed time and harvest. There's going to be cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night. But there's coming a day after the tribulation when the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. There will be no more harvest moon. There will be no more moonlight. Jesus said in John 4 that he had come to do the works of the one who sent him and that he was to do the work while it was day. And then he said, because night's coming, Night's coming when nobody is going to be able to work. There's coming a time when the harvest moon will stop in its seasons. And whatever isn't gathered will be gathered and thrown into the wine press. But can we work together while well, it is day by the light of the harvest moon? Because you are a chosen generation. Because you are part of a royal priesthood. You are set apart to show the goodness of God to those that are in the field. Because he called you out of darkness into his marvelous night. And he's asking you to go and be his light now. And Peter wrote those words to believers that were scattered. They were living like foreigners, temporary residents in a strange land. But he specified those people. He said that they were believers like the apostles were believers. He was talking about apostolic believers when he was writing his letter. And he addressed his letter. And he said in 2 Peter 1.19, you are a light that shines in a dark place and it's time for us to shine in our dark world and as I was praying today I came across Isaiah 50 and 4 and I was praying that God would give us what he gave to Isaiah 
Isaiah said that God gave him the tongue of the learned. Now, that's not a tongue so we can boast about our spiritual knowledge. The Bible tells us that that tongue that God would give us, the tongue of the learned, would be so that we would know when to speak the word in the right season. In the harvest season, I need the right word to share with that person that is weary, to share the love and the hope of God. And then it goes on to say I that when we wake up in the morning, our ears would be awakened to his voice. Oh, God, what a prayer. When you wake up in the morning, God, I don't just want to be awake. Wake up my ears to hear your voice so I can hear your love song and I can sing it to others. We are here in this season on purpose. God chose for us to be born in this time. He created us with a heavenly purpose. So don't be weary in well-doing. Because if you faint not, in a due season, you're going to reap. God wants us to reap. I invite you to stand with me. I'm not into astronomy, and that article talked about planets and double play and a harvest moon lollygagging. You know, I don't really understand what the planets are doing. I'm not into all that. But when I read that the harvest moon was lollygagging, well, I like words. And it was so picturesque to me to see that big bright moon up in the sky. And it was like, it's lollygagging. It means like dawdling dilly-dallying. It means not being in any kind of a hurry. Shine on, shine on, harvest me. I don't think God is in a hurry because he's looking out on the field and he's still saying, I see a bride in there. Shine on, shine on, harvest me. From me and my gal, I'm coming for a bride. And she's not all there yet. She's in the field. If she was all there, he'd be back by now. If he was all done, we'd be finished. But he's not all done. And when I looked up that word lollygagging, so I made sure I gave you the right definition. Do you know that it has another meaning? And that meaning is similar to what those songs were talking about that guy and gal were doing under the harvest moon. They were getting close. They were spending time together. It's like those spooners that they were talking about. They were touching and showing affection. We've got to touch the world with the love of God. Hallelujah. I don't think he's in a hurry. He's given us some extra light because he's still reaching. Are we still reaching? God, we're turning to you today. We're asking you to give us your vision. I believe that you have allowed us to have this word in this season. God, tomorrow night is the full harvest moon. And as we walk outside of this place, even tonight, when we see the beginnings of it, and then tomorrow and the next night as we see the glory of your harvest moon, I pray, God, that we would be reminded that there is still a work to be done, that until you call us home, there's still souls in the field. There's still people that you're reaching for, and we need to be working while it is day, even though it is a dark time, even though the atmosphere has changed and things don't look the same, things aren't always looking so great in our world today. But God, let us be your light and let us go out in this season that you have called us to, to reach the world with the song of love to sing love's tune by the light of the harvest moon. Thank you, Jesus. 
you are dismissed in Jesus' name. Thank you for your kind attention, and God bless you till we meet again.